Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at how to find the equation of a normal line using the derivative. Now we've already looked at how to find the equation of a tangent line and we remember that a tangent is a line that hits another line or curve at one point only. So on this diagram, I've drawn the curve y equals x squared and we're looking at the point x equals 1. And here we can see that this line is a tangent. It touches the curve y equals x squared one time only. It doesn't go through the curve again, and it only touches the curve at the point we're looking at, which is x equals 1. And we know that to find an equation of a tangent line, we use the point gradient formula, and we use the derivative to find what the gradient is of this line. So the derivative doesn't give us the tangent, it just gives us the slope or the gradient of this tangent line. The only other thing you need is the point, which we can see here is 1 and 1. So with our normal line, we're actually going to draw a normal, which is still a straight line, and it still is going to go through this point that we want at x equals 1, but it's going to form a right angle with the tangent. So it will look something like this. And most importantly, there is a right angle there. Or I could have drawn it down here. It forms a right angle with the tangent. So it still passes through this same point, but you can see here that it's not a tangent because it's going to hit the curve again somewhere up here if I was to keep that line going up. Like this, if you can see that. So that's going to clearly go through this curve twice. So that's why it's not a tangent. But the important thing is that it forms a right angle with the tangent. So the normal goes through the same point, it is a straight line, but it has a different gradient. Okay, so how do we find the equation of this line? Well, the first thing we do is we write our formula. It's a straight line, so it's going to be given by the equation of y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. That is the point gradient formula. And the only things we need to know in this formula to find the equation of the line, because we know the final equation is still going to have y and x in it, we're just looking to find what y1 is, m, and x1. And I'll just draw those with black. So we're trying to find y1, m, and x1. And x1 and y1 just represent a single point on this line that we're looking at. Here, what's our point? Well, we can see that our point is at x equals 1, and we know that when x equals 1, y equals 1 squared. I've just replaced x with the 1 to get our y coordinate, which is 1. So we know that this x is actually our x1 for this formula, and our y is actually our y1. So we know that just here we've got 1, and just here we've got 1. The only thing we haven't filled out is our gradient. Now, if this was a tangent, to find the gradient, we would just find the derivative of this equation. And then we would replace x with 1, and then that would be our gradient. But because this is not the same gradient as a tangent, rather it's the opposite, we're going to do something slightly different. So after you do the first step of finding the point, of finding the point we're going to do our second step of finding the gradient, and that's going to be using the derivative still. We're just going to do something different after. So we find the derivative of x squared, and we know using our rule, the power rule, that the 2 is going to come to the front to give 2x, and we know that 2 minus 1 is 1, so I don't need to write that. So we get the derivative of y is 2x. Now I'm going to sub in our point, x equals 1 here, which is 2 and 1. So y dash equals 2 at x equals 1. In other words, the gradient of this black line we just found has a gradient of 2. 
because y dash is the same as our gradient. But it's not the gradient of the normal. It's the gradient of the tangent. So I would just put in 2 there if I was finding the equation of this tangent. But because I'm finding the gradient of or the equation of the normal, it has a different gradient. And to find that gradient, we're going to use this gradient given by the tangent. Because they hit each other at right angles, they are perpendicular. And when we have perpendicular lines, you can find the gradient of that perpendicular line by doing something with the gradient of this tangent or the other line. So we know here that our the, t the gradient of the tangent equals 2. And to find the perpendicular gradient, we're going to do two things. We're going to flip this fraction here. And you're probably thinking, what fraction? Because it's only 2. Well, we know if you get a whole number, we could just write 2 as 2 over 1. So the first thing we're going to do to find the gradient of our normal, the gradient of the normal, I've just put mn, n is not anything, it's just to label that gradient as the normal. We're going to flip this. So we flip it, so it becomes a half. It's called the reciprocal. And what we're also going to do is one other thing. Because this was positive, we can see here that this is now negative. The gradient is negative. So it's always got the opposite sign. If that is a positive, which it's got an invisible plus in front of it, we make this negative. And we also flip whatever fraction is there. And that's it. That follows the formula, if you've ever seen the rule, that the gradient of the tangent times the gradient of the normal, or just two perpendicular gradients, must times each other to equal minus 1. And we can see here that 2 times minus a half would equal, the 2s would cancel out, minus 1. And that's why that rule always works. So technically this is the formula, but the easier way to do it is to flip the fraction and change the sign. Flip this fraction, 2 over 1 to 1 over 2, and change the sign from positive to negative. If it was negative, it would now be positive. Okay, great. Now we have the gradient. We can sub substitute all this information back into our equation up here. So we're going to get y minus 1 equals minus a half x minus 1. I've just filled in those bits of information. So all you need is the gradient, and the gradient is given by doing the derivative, pretending that it's a tangent, and then changing the gradient by flipping it and making the sign the opposite. So three, step three would be to change that gradient. Once you get that, you put it back up in here for step four. Okay, great. So once we get this, we know we've just got to simplify everything and expand the brackets. So I'll just make some room here. And we're going to get, we're going to times everything by 2 here first because we've got a fraction. So I'm going to times this bit by 2, this by 2, and this by 2. And that's going to allow us to get rid of that 2. So that whole bracket doesn't change because it had half on it. But this is going to become 2y minus 2, which equals negative 1 times this bracket. So that's going to be negative 1 times x, negative 1 times minus 1. So negative 1 times x is negative x, and negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to express the equation in general form and collect all these like terms. So we're going to bring x to this side to make it positive because x should always be positive in general form. And general form is when we make, we put everything to one side and make it equal 0. So we're going to get x plus 2y, and we're also going to bring this, min this plus 1 over, and we know that the opposite of plus 1 is minus 1. So we're going to minus 1 from minus 2 to get minus 3, which equals 0. And that there is the equation of the normal. That, I should probably write it in red so we can understand that x plus 2y minus 3 equals 0. That is the equation of this red line. The gradient of this one was 2, and the gradient of this was negative a half. 
because they were perpendicular and that's the rule that times those two gradients together, we have to get minus one. Okay, guys, hopefully that makes sense. You can probably see that the process is very similar to finding the, great, the equation of a tangent line, except you just have to add this extra step in of changing the gradient around using this process we looked at. Hope that helps, guys. Please subscribe and see you next time.